Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this webinar of the uh, Intercultural Professionals of the Royal Tropical Institute. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome you in the wood cabinet, my most preferred room um, in this building. Show you around, it's all wood, the smell is great. Uh, fortunately, you cannot smell it. Uh, we're gonna talk about intercultural challenges in virtual leadership. Um, and let's see what that brings. Um, introduce myself. Um, I had a career in uh, international, uh, in multinationals, different regions of the world, um, different products. And uh, I ended up uh, in China for a joint venture uh, that challenged me or interested me so enormously in uh, a different way of working and living that I came back to the Netherlands and started studying Chinese in Leiden and later also Asian studies. Um, I changed my career and what I'm now doing is uh, I'm an intercultural trainer for Tropical Institute, intercultural professionals, and I have my own company for China briefings. I am board member of China Network Guangxi. We have monthly business events. And I'm a mentor at the School of Applied Sciences, Hogeschool Rotterdam, um, for the students. And uh, all of that combined has all to do with China and Asia, of course, um, meaning that a lot of my examples will go that way. Uh, the Asian and China examples, um, whenever you, as listeners, have another example of different parts of the world, uh, please let me know. I'm very interested. Uh, introduce Tropical Institute, KITS. It's a Dutch name for Royal Tropical Institute. Intercultural professional is, professionals is one of the units, one of the business units, uh, together with hospitality, so events. This great building, um, uh, you can have your party, your wedding, and it has beautiful rooms and hallways, auditoriums. Um, we will be very happy to show you. And of course, real estate. So you as an organization or a company can rent uh, uh, rooms to, to work in. And also the other part is the not-for-profit, the knowledge units of which uh, SED and gender, and SED stands for a social economic development um, and health. And they are working uh, together with the World Bank and mainly health issues. And um, they work according to the sustainable, sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So this combination working very well in this beautiful building. Um, the logistics of today, of the webinar, um, we work with Livestorm and um, at the right side of your screen, you can press uh, uh, the questions, of course, a link to the questions, if you have one. Um, whenever you have a question and you see maybe that that question is already um, written down by someone else, you can upvote the question. At the end of the webinar, we will see which questions are um, at the first uh, lined up and we will start answering those. Uh, we have polls and whenever there's a polls, I will show you and say it also, you press or you, you, you uh, click on the polls uh, link at the right side of your screen. Um, yes, intercultural challenges in virtual leadership. Um, yeah, welcome to all leaders, of course, uh, or all the people who want to be a leader and um, are already working maybe in international teams and leading international teams. I'd like to start with a poll here. I'm very curious about you. Are you a leader? Could you please go to the polls at the right side of your screen and um, please answer which one is for you? Still moving. 
Very good. Most of you say definitely. And ha uh, half of that is guess so, and the same amount for not yet. But most of you are leaders. Well, that is good to know. Share experiences. Um, also, what I said about uh, when I quote something or I give an example, um, please do write in the questions link when you have a different example for, of a different kind, different side of the world. Please do. Um, when cultures meet, intercultural competences. Yeah, um, it's about being an effective virtual leader across cultures. And um, we speak, what I think, about four elements. Uh, it's about leadership, being effective, being in an intercultural environment, and as an extra, uh, also virtual nowadays. I mean, the last two or three months for, uh, I think, almost the whole world, and I think most of the people who are here today with us. Um, yeah, virtual. We moved from a three-dimensional to a two-dimensional world within two or two and a half months. Um, and um, according to my view, uh, this is difficult for people. Of course we manage. We are technical, we are inventive, we are creative, we do, we learn. But I think uh, that it works very well because we know each other. We went to a uh, two-dimensional, to a virtual world with people we know as colleagues, as team members, um, as maybe suppliers or uh, clients you already knew beforehand. Uh, but what happens if we are um, continue to do this and we talk to only people only in a virtual way. And we also start talking to people we don't know. We get to new team members, new colleagues. What happens then? Um, in my view, it is very important that still you organize once in a while uh, live personal meetings to be able to start to learn to know each other. Because one of the things I learned also as being a mentor in a, in a class of students, 30 students, it works really well because I know them for six months. I have one new student in my class since uh, three weeks because he has a reset from another, from another year. I have real difficulty learning to know him. His camera is off, his mic is off. It's very hard to talk to him. When I ask him, okay, when there is an issue, let me know. He won't do because he doesn't know me. So think about that when you have new team members and uh, you have people there um, you don't know yet. Of course it works. But still, don't forget the 3D world. In my opinion, humans, we are made for group work. And of course, this is all an extra, but it doesn't all solve all the in-between goings of people. Uh, what types of leaders are there? We have the directive leader. Uh, usually seen by his team members as a micromanager. He closely supervises everyone. And then we have the authoritative leader. That's the one that um, provides very clear directives and sets standards for everyone of his team. Then we have the affiliative leader, the peacemaker. No, yes, the peacemaker, who is concerned with ensuring that harmony is there between staff and employees. Uh, everybody needs to agree, no conflict whatsoever. And we have the participative leader, meaning the politician who enforces democracy, everyone to vote. Uh, the voting decides which way we go. Every vote counts. The pace setting leader, that's the one, it's the overactive one who demands that all team members have the same high standards as he or she has. And he has no or she has no tolerance for dead weight. So you have to keep up. 
with her or him. And then the coaching manager, that's the one who motivates and inspires and is a guru for his people. Um, and then again, a poll, I'm very curious, what type of leader are you? Please go to the polls at the right side of your screen. Mostly coaching for now. Still going. Participatory also quite, but still coaching far ahead. Very few for guru, for pace setting. Directive, okay, a bit authoritative, authoritative. A few. Okay, we could say that coaching is the most and this, a good second one is uh, participatory. Okay, nice to know. Also nice to know of yourself. And maybe also nice to know how your team members see you. What sort of a leader do you think your team members think you are? One for reflection. Um, what is leadership? Um, in this part of the world, and then I mean Northwestern Europe, uh, the Netherlands, Scandinavian countries, uh, North of America, we feel good with this one. It's the ability to guide others without force into a direction or decision that leaves them still feeling empowered and accomplished. Um, it's a bit of what we said just as type of leaders. It's the, the coaching one, the participative one. Um, however, when we look at different parts of the world, um, we see other types of leaders popping up or other types of leadership popping up. In China, it's the paternalistic leadership, meaning that um, the leader is, is mother or father for his or her team, uh, guides the way, um, um, shows the direction and expects his people to follow, leads the way. Then you have the Middle East. It's about status and face saving. So um, um, how it is that people perceive you, your image is very important. And face saving, uh, don't let them lose face. Don't um, uh, give criticism when other people are present. Uh, do it when, if you do it and when you do it, do it one-on-one, -on -one, but be careful there. Eastern Europe. It's independent. Uh, they protect the leadership position. Look at the current leaders of Eastern European countries. Uh, that is what they do. They're strong leaders and they um, uh, do everything to stay a leader. Uh, and they um, take harsh measurements and want the people to follow them. In Africa, it's, it's about harmony, safeguard harmony. The group, the team, they need to be happy, no conflict. So yes, there are quite some different leadership styles and meaning also when talking about effectiveness, it means that um, when having an international team, think about how effective are you with all the members of the team? Does your style of leadership, let it for example be the, um, the, the first one to guide others? Uh, would that be working for everyone in your team? And be also open for um, uh, your own intuition when you have an online meeting and you see that not the whole team is reacting to what, to what you're saying in the right way. Um, maybe contact them afterwards and say or ask whether they need more uh, guidance, uh, they need more directives to know what to do. I, I also see it with my students. Some are very happy, very creative to find things out themselves, but others, they just do nothing until clearly said what to do. So very directive. And it's an easy one also because you can wait and ask your manager or your teacher to say what to do. So see what your team members need. That's the effectiveness of it. 
um, the hierarchy is one of the most uh, strong differences, biggest dif differences between people. When you look at the northwestern part of the world, uh, Netherlands and Scandinavia, and um, most of other parts of the world. Um, again, also here, uh, the Netherlands is the exception. Um, most of the rest of the world um, feels most comfortable in an environment that emphasizes clarity and respect. So clear directives and uh, um, uh, uh, respectful communication and harmony. And not like we're used to um, telling the truth and um, see that as a uh, positive uh, adding towards the quality of the work. So yes, there is quite some differences in um, how you yourself also are perceived as a leader by different team members. Think about that too sometimes. The poll. Okay, what type of leadership hierarchy would you or do you prefer? Do you feel most comfortable in an environment that emphasizes equality and informal communication? So uh, Mr. President of the Netherlands on his bike. Or do you feel most comfortable in an environment that emphasizes clarity and respect? Yeah. Most of them go for the uh, bike of President Rutte. Yep, 42% going up. Fifty-two. Yes, definitely, that's the winner. And that also has to do a, a lot to do, of course, with the part of the world we are in. And that I think, but I'm guessing that most of the listeners are from um, the Netherlands and used to um, this type of leadership. Thank you. Um, what makes you a leader? What makes it that people see you as a leader? Um, have a vision. Um, see the road ahead. Describe the road ahead for your team members. Uh, be clear about that. Where is the company or the organization going? Um, and uh, repeat that several times in the year or when you think it's needed because um, people want to go somewhere. They want to know the road. Have a vision. Um, accomplish something. Create results. In my opinion, people thrive on accomplishing something, creating results, finishing something, uh, be good in something, um, uh, and a project with a, a successful result. Um, so let them do that. Create these moments for them. Um, it, it, it creates a, a great team normally. It binds people together. Uh, it's good to have to come to successful results together. Uh, be charismatic. Of course, you say, okay, you're born charismatic, but I think you can also learn it a bit. Um, uh, you do use your, your, use your voice, um, uh, be, be enthusiastic, uh, uh, inspire your people with um, the things you think are needed for the project or the, the, the product or the, the, the project you're working on. So, um, and these things, all of them, these three, you can also do it in words. So it's an online, it's real good possible. Also, they have a vision, accomplish something, work towards a result and be charismatic. And also this one, take decisions. Um, it's very good to show that you can take a decision. Don't leave it open all the time. I think people uh, also whenever it's not clear whether you should decide or what you should decide. Um, Having a decision, whether it's a wrong one or a right one, nobody knows in a certain moment. And um, But having a decision and taking it is good for most of your team members. 
Um, and it also shows you that you are a um, leader who knows that um, uh, takes also maybe a bit of risks, but at least knows um, where and what where the decision is has to be made to move on with the project, to accomplish something. Um, what elements does leadership consist of? Um, well, I put these ones together. Um, for me, it is motivation, inspiring, convincing, coordinating, listening, and reflect. And then the first, um, uh, well, motivation and inspiring is more or less the same area. Um, make them enthusiastic for the organization, for the project, for what you're working on, and convince them that sometimes they need convincing that this is the right route to go, uh, the path to take, and uh, they need to put work in there uh, also for the team to move on and coordinate it. Uh, structure. Structure is very important, especially also online. Um, people tend to um, feel a bit more loose from the organization because they are not confronted with the person, with, with the team uh, members and the boss in real life. So uh, I think having a um, strict structure, of, so of course, depending from what kind of organization you are, is very, is working very well in a virtual online environment. And listen, I think especially listening to uh, your employees, your team members, is in these virtual days very, very important. Uh, try to use your intuition, try to see what is not said. Um, and see, try to see which tensions are maybe um, existing uh, between your team members. Um, my experience is that after a couple of months online, being virtual, um, sometimes there are some tensions popping up because there's no coffee machine meeting anymore. You don't see each other. You don't just drop, see each other in the car park. Um, there is a lot less inform informal talking. So um, listening is a very, very big uh, point here, a very important thing to, to do. And reflect. Reflect is, for me, is reflect about your own behavior as a leader. Um, are you really that important? Um, um, was that really the right decision? Um, uh, is there maybe another way to go? Uh, maybe that criticism of um, your colleague or um, a person of your team um, might be a bit true or, or could be used in a next project. So try to reflect about yourself, your own behavior. Uh, and also, very important in many cultures, show that you are a leader. Clothing. Appearance, of course. Clothing. Um, and this is very well done online, of course. So see to it that uh, you appear in front of the screen as uh, so that you have thought about what you're wearing and which image you want to show. And also your body posture. What, what is it? How do you sit? Energetic? Tired, just out of bed, how do you look? Very important. Especially when you look at the Asian cultures and you want to um, uh, think about the paternalistic style, you have to give the example. So if you as a leader don't give the example and, or you give the bad example, they will think that this is the normal way of, of doing things. And maybe you don't want that. So think about what image you spread. And the work environment, that is then, of course, the online now, the virtual one. And if, you, um, if your uh, uh, office around your laptop uh, looks like this, something is wrong. Because again, people, when they log in and they talk to you, they see this. And I think personally that it's not a good thing to see that um, there is no structure in the office of the boss. Um, so see to it that also your background uh, don't do it. Don't 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 have a background like your bedroom or your bed or, or your shower or or be very careful on what you pick as a background. 
um, maybe a poster, maybe a logo of your company. Uh, think about that. And your voice, of course, yeah. That's also a very a thing for online um, uh, management. Um, Seek with that you, again, with your voice, your, you use your voice, uh, hard tones, soft tones. Um, uh, you could uh, try to make it interesting with uh, alternating the tone, a bit of silence, and um, you don't want them to fall asleep in front of the screen while you're talking. So also, um, don't make it too long. Um, um, I think one hour, one and a half hour online, constant listening is already a lot for people. So uh, also let others talk. Um, language is one of the things that is really important. And um, having said that, I'm moving to the next screen. Uh, it's also a big part of effectiveness in intercultural environment. Because uh, how do you talk? Uh, 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 communication styles. Do you do a alternating style in the sense that A says something, B waits, and B answers when A uh, is finished? That is Northwestern American style. Or do you have team members, or yourself maybe, um, that have the Asian style, silent moments? A talks, there's a silence, and then B answers. Or you have an overlapping style. Um, A talks, B starts talking before A is finished. When you, for example, have an Italian person and a Chinese person in your team, then you as a leader have to give real structure to who is talking when and also st stopping uh, uh, persons who tend to talk on. Um, relationships. Um, are you thinking of having uh, a relationship with your colleague because he or she does very good work and you did various projects and the results are very good, so you have trust built because the results are good. Or are you one that has to know the other one, the other person, to give trust and to work together? So um, different parts of the world, different ideas about how to do that. Uh, Relationship-based or work-based relations. Also important for your team members when they're in other sites, in other parts of the world, um, what are they wanting? How, how do you manage that? Um, one of the polls I want to ask you, uh, which one do you prefer? Do you go for the relationship because of the content of the work, the result you um, accomplished, or the character, the trust, when you know someone really good? Okay, it's coming already. A lot of relationship. That's nice. Everybody uses the poll step, I think. Yes, they do. Okay. Um, Mainly the character of the person, so the relationship based. That's interesting. Still growing. Uh, very good. But then think again about other members of your team. What do they do? What do you expect from you or from other team members? Thank you. Uh, planning. Do you plan as much as possible in advance? Or are you one that is flexible and you wait for the priorities of the day to start um, planning your day or not planning at all and see what happens? Uh, of course, different parts of the world. Um, the Asian part is more about what is the priority of the day. And the Western part is about um, you plan ahead, like you budget for three years. Uh, I once tried to have my Chinese team uh, write a three-year budget and I didn't succeed because the future 
in on the um, Asian side of the world is uh, completely unknown and for sure that we don't know how that will look in three years so what's the use of planning while when we look at the future from the uh, western side of things then the future is um, something that looks like the present and you can um, try to think of how that will be so also you can plan so different things and different ways of looking at things opinions um, we appreciate when people express their opinions clearly and openly so very direct Dutch way um, I tell you what's wrong I try to help you and I hope next time it's better because you include my in criticism or are you one that appreciates uh, diplomatic language sensitive discussions uh, harmony, no conflict. Again, if this is in your team, a virtual team especially, give them space. Uh, don't ask through when there is an opinion uh, there. Um, don't create the conflict. Maybe if you really want to know, do it after the meeting, one-on-one, -on -one, in a phone call. And then there is the low context part of the world, meaning um, the world you the, 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 the people understand that there is a core message and that's with very few words. Um, the core message is um, uh, said to the team members and also understood in the rest of the world, meaning almost the whole world except the Netherlands and Scandinavian countries are high context countries, meaning that uh, you need more words to be able to understand what the core message means. So that meeting where the Dutchman is already sitting at nine o'clock, not seeing any one of his team members there um, because they're at the coffee machine after a few months when we're back into the normal situation, then of course, uh, those team members already started the meeting too, but they are starting to create it with context. How are you doing? Do you feel good? How was your trip towards the office? So see to it that uh, also that is respected in your team. Task versus relationship. That's what we said, direct versus indirect. Business first, low context. And uh, lots of small talk, coffee machine, high context. To the point, low context, careful, high very concrete or indirect metaphors, situations like that. So uh, that's the high context world. Little words, low context, many words, high context. Mainly verbal, low, and more nonverbal, very difficult nowadays, is high context. So yeah, um, the high context, the, the more nonverbal is really difficult in this virt virtual world. Um, yes, the English, of course. Uh, we all say we speak English, but of course we all do it from a different background. So do we all understand what things mean? When, for example, we say, how are you? We know we are supposed to say good because it's not a real question. It's just saying hello. Um, when it's interesting, for an Englishman, it doesn't mean anything at all. It could be the opposite. For a Dutchman who hears from an Englishman that something is interesting, he thinks it's really interesting and he carries on the same way. Uh, professional means completely something different in different parts of the world. What is professional? When you're Japanese and you get drunk together with your boss after working hours, it's professional because you're creating a relationship. So yes, but doing it in the Western part of the world, it's not at all. Uh, respectful, also, with, for example, um, older people. Asian part of the world, the older, the wiser, so you listen very carefully which is sometimes, or most of the times, a different story in the Western side of the world. So different views, different ways of seeing things. Um, different ways of seeing things. Uh, think about this one. You made a business deal, and you do agree, both of you, about the greenhouse, the rocket, and the tank you bought or you sold. But in the end, there is no um, deal done because you all talk about, you both talk about completely different things. So uh, the message here is do see that you provide sketches, you provide pictures, photos, um, 
and make things visual uh, because it could be very well that you talk about completely different product issues and it creates enormous amount of misunderstandings. Yes, online challenge, 80% of all the communication is nonverbal. So, uh, especially nowadays in the online world, this is a big thing. So, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about personal distance. You don't know how close people stand to you or what they would like to do and, and what that means. Um, behavior, maybe a bit in front of the screen. Facial expressions, yes, you can still do, but it's 2D. You don't you just see the flat front of the face, nothing else. Body position, yes, in front of the screen, just your upper upper half. Uh, whether you sit straight, touching, nothing, looking, like winking in meetings, looking at each other, um, seeing expressions in faces, nothing. Uh, you do can play, you can play with voice characteristics, of course, tones, what we just discussed. And of course, your appearance. Do you decide what to do with your hair? Um, do you grow a beard? Um, uh, do you have a moustache? W what do you do? Uh, how do you look? What appearance? What image do you want to uh, bring over? And of course, smell. There's no smell at all. You don't smell anything. And sometimes, I don't know, in my classroom, not good. Hey, and what about gestures? Uh, be very careful with gestures. Don't use gestures. Not just, not online, but in intercultural environment, please do not. They mean different things in different parts of the world and it causes, and it still does, a lot of misunderstandings. Um, everywhere and always, and sometimes uh, also anger. Try to avoid, it's difficult for me too sometimes, I still do it. Online leader tips. Sit straight. Create your image, create your office. Just imagine what people see when they're in your house, when, in your house, in your living room, in your office at home. And do think that um, sitting with, for example, pets, have pets also on the screen or behind you, that might cause problems in the different parts of the world. Uh, for example, Islamic countries, they don't appreciate dogs in the house. It gives you maybe a different image than you want to bring over uh, to your team. Think about that. Um, another few. Do not have meetings all the time. Uh, meaning that you don't disturb your people. They're working. They're virtually working. They're concentrating. Uh, don't disturb them all the time. Uh, maybe just a morning meeting, a morning call to listen to what's going on. That might work and give structure in these meetings, agenda, productivity tools, um, what we just talked about also. Structure in a virtual world is very, very important. Um, and let's each person do what they are doing best and maybe link up two or three, a pair, pair them up and to see how they can support themselves. Don't give you, yourself all the work in being a leader and phoning everyone every moment. Uh, form groups and uh, make a combination also of characters maybe and of cultures and see what the best combination is to bring out the best of uh, the two or three people involved. Um, this is the last poll um, and I'm very curious, I want to ask you, what makes you a good leader for your team members? Please go to the right side of your screen, click polls and um, you can choose more than one and I'm curious what comes out of it. Expert, I see. Okay. Help with future career path is high up. Expert also pretty high. Uh, clear instructions also high. Uh, being challenged, the highest right now. Uh, very low on uh, be like a good father and mother and also low on um, <clears throat> personal life. 
still going. And this is very interesting, and I want to um, add to this. Thank you for, for filling this. And I want to add to this, this is what you think your team members think of you, but it might be a good thing to ask your team members themselves what makes you a good leader for them. Um, and you can, you can use these questions, no problem. Um, before we go to the Q&A, oh, this was the poll already done, yeah. Uh, I want to um, bring your attention to the next webinar of uh, Intercultural Professionals that is on June 18, and it is in Dutch. I'm uh, for the international um, non-Dutch speaking uh, people among you. I'm, I'm, we are doing our best to have the next one in English again. Um, this is Interculturele Vaardigheden en Kansengelijkheid voor Ieder Kind door Eva van Ooyen. Uh, more to find on the uh, link below. Um, and then the Q&A session. I'm very curious about your questions. And I'm looking now at the uh, chat, the questions. And there is one there with nine questions for the question of Nick. As a relatively young manager, I work together with older people from Asian organizations. How do I tackle the hierarchy issue, taking a younger person less serious? Aha, that is a very good question. Um, I guess it's about people who report to you, or are there are they colleagues? Um, when it, it's about people reporting to you, well, it's about the hierarchy structure. If you have if you are given um, uh, the leadership, not only in the sense as you are being the leader, but really in a function, so you are their manager officially on paper, uh, then it might be solved. But when you have a coaching role and you have to guide them into uh, a new organization or a new way of working, and you're way younger, that might be very difficult and you can only do it if, with the support of um, their manager. And their manager then has to tell them that he or she is backing you up, and that for him or her it's very important. I think that's one of the only ways it works. I hope I answered your question. Um, do you have additional literature on this topic you recommended us to read? Which topic you mean exactly is that? Um, I don't know which topic you mean, like leadership, intercultural le leadership, maybe. Um, well, there's plenty, of course. Um, what I'm always looking at, I used to look at, is uh, von Strompenaar's servant leadership. It's not specifically about uh, intercultural leadership, but it gives background about how to manage teams in different parts of the world. Um, when you Google on leadership, there is so much to find. Um, I have no book or I have no, no, I, at this moment, I cannot advise you anything. I think it's Googling and finding your way through all the literature that there is and also see to it that it is what you need at this moment because there's so much that is for you not valid right now. Uh, within Europe, what are the main intercultural challenges? You mean like being in France or Belgium? Um, well, uh, my biggest cultural challenge was started working in Belgium. Uh, same language, also Dutch. And I uh, made the my biggest managerial um, um, bloppers uh, of my whole career because I was expecting that it was the same world as the Netherlands. So be prepared, because the hierarchy is different in Belgium. Uh, a lot of settings of social uh, uh, going, with the social between people is different. Um, the Belgium is com Belgian people are working, the working environment is completely different. 
um, from the Netherlands. And uh, for example, if you want to read a business case where things went very, very wrong, it's about the um, the the, the uh, Spoorwegen, the NS, the Dutch uh, railway, who wanted to, together with the Belgium, um, to decide about uh, the Italian buying of uh, the, the railway a couple of years ago. So look in that one, the Thales, I think it's about that one. See what happened there. So it, it went so wrong. And also Fortress Bank is an example. Um, was taken over by, I think, a Dutch bank, but things went very, very wrong. For example, France, um, there's a business case about uh, Air France KLM. Also very interesting reading material. Look into that one too. And then try to read the one that is written by a Frenchman. That is very interesting. Um, how would you describe Latin American leadership? Hey, Vitsa, good to see you there too. Um, oh yeah, I'm, you're more a specialist on that one than I am. I would ask you, Latin American leadership. Um, I have no specifics about that part of the world. And um, I would love to hear your views on that one. <laughs> Anything else? And then Linda, within Europe, are the main culture challenges? We had that one, right? Yeah. Janneke, uh, could you be a mix as a leader? Of course you can. We're always a mix as a leader. Uh, so see that what works best for you, because I think the closer you st stick to your own character, uh, the better it works. But um, do um, find out what your team needs, what what they expect of you as a leader, and see how you can bend that for yourself into a way you can work with it. You cannot change 100%, of course, that's not the way it works. But what I'm also, when you work with international teams, um, you almost have to find a way, uh, you have to find a new language among each other. When you are with various nationalities together, um, you have to agree to words that mean the same for everyone. And um, you have to agree when you, you sort of create this language that you have to agree with the whole team that this word means exactly that. So you almost uh, make a new language up. Otherwise, it's very difficult and stays difficult. Um, what kind of they have a mixed leadership? Depends on the, what kind of leaders when they have a mixed leadership. Oops. Um, yeah, you mean probably with different teams or different locations in the world that you're visiting. Um, again, as I said before, stick a bit to your to your own character, but also read about what is expected of you in that country, that location and that cultural background. Because still, this is about effectiveness. How are you effective? You want to create or you want to reach a result. How can you do that? It's not about you, it's about the result. And if that is a different way from your normal leadership, um, it might be a challenge, yes, of course, but it might be very interesting to find out how that works together with your team. Um, we are limited on time, we're already five minutes over. Is there any live question? Anybody who wants to come in and have a have given be given the word for a live question? Please in the chat. I hear from you. Let me know in the chat whether you want to come live. That's true, Doris. What you say, clothing. Depends on the situation. Anyone who wants to have a live question? I don't think so. We wait a bit. In the meantime, of course, there's so much more about leadership and so much more about intercultural leadership. Um, of course, we have at the Tropical Institute leader leadership trainings. Um, if you want to know more, make contact with the intercultural professionals and ask for information. Okay, uh, I thank you very much for listening. And um, 
The topic is huge, so this is just a tip, tips from me. Um, more to be found. Hope to see you again in uh, uh, other webinars of Tropical Institute. And uh, I do wish you a lot of um, success and result working with your international teams. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.